Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Gent Sense. Hope that you're doing well. Today I got for you guys another viewer's choice video, subscriber's choice video, where you guys told me what you feel like are the absolute best cheap alternatives to more expensive scents out there. And we're not just talking about clones here. When I say a cheaper fragrance, it could be a cheap, affordable niche fragrance, designer fragrance, or it, it, could, it could also be a clone. Yeah, but I have right here 12 of your choices for the best cheap alternatives to expensive scents out there. <laughs> and all of them will be linked in the description. Shout out to all you guys that submitted your answers and also upvoted other people's. And if you wanna be in a future video, check out the community tab of the YouTube channel. There's always a question on there where you can leave an answer uh, for your fragrance choice. So this first one, <laughs> I don't own the full bottle of, I have a sample of it. That doesn't really count, but that's what I got. So that's what we're going with. Don't judge the size. I don't know. It's one that I've been meaning to get, but I haven't got it. That's the excuse I'm gonna roll with right now. And I really don't have an excuse because it's pretty affordable, but this one comes from JZED9138, who says, Bois Imperial as an alternative to Ganymede. Not the same, but a less polarizing, easy to appreciate scent in a similar vein by the same perfumer and way cheaper. Bois Imperial, I said Bois Imperial. But he's not wrong. This is all of what he just said. It's similar to Ganymede, done by the same perfumer and at full retail, it's not expensive. It's by Essential Parfum, and I think full retail, it's like $85 or $89 or something like that. So even if you can't find it at discounters, you can still get it for under a hundred bucks. Uh, I know Twisted Lily carries it or they used to, but I think they still do. And uh, Gents 10 is the code for 10% off there. So you can get it for under 80 bucks there. Ah. Also, you know the drill, other codes. Uh, I've got new ones for Joma Shop, only work in the app. New ones for Max Aroma, so make sure you use these, not the old ones, those are dead now. Unfortunately, rest in peace, apps in the chat. And also the Ood Store, uh, among all the other usual codes. I hate that. I hate that itty bitty little sample there. It looks so pathetic. Just like edit in a bottle right there. It looks, that looks cool. Next we have Vin's Gone's Old Guy. Don't know if I said that correctly, probably not. The original Sidrapoise from Mancera. It's great and very affordable. This is the only Aventus DNA fragrance I wear anymore. This gets me more compliments and lasts a long time. I own Aventus and a couple of clones, but the OG Sidrapoise is the best affordable fragrance for me. I've harped about this. A lot of people have harped about this, but Mancera, really affordable for the most part. You're shopping at discounters. Even at full retail, it's like 180 bucks. So not really expensive when you're talking about niche fragrances in general, because it's 120 mil size with good performance, good versatility, good compliment factor, all that. So under 200 bucks, it's basically designer prices at this point. But at discounters, you can often find this for under 70 bucks. And pretty much all day, you can find it for under 80. So while I know some people would look at that and say, ah, I mean, at the end of the day, that's still not super affordable. When you break it all down, you know, big performance, versatility, compliment factor, like I said, pretty nice quality, 120 mils, and you can get it for in like the mid 60 range a lot of times. I think that's a pretty good deal. The next choice comes to us from Atomic Sense, who says, even though some may think it's outdated, I still absolutely love La Yukawam. That was, that was pretty smooth. <laughs> Hand-eye coordination, 10 out of 10. Technically, I wasn't looking when I did that, so I don't know if that counts as hand-eye. But La Yukawam was a hype monster when that first came out, when it really started to catch people's attention, and that is a clone of Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford. And that's another thing that's maybe not interesting, but when this came out, it was like, oh, Tuscan Leather for cheap, sign me up. And Rosasi La Yukawam wasn't even that cheap as far as clone fragrances go. This was actually decently pricey for a clone, because when you think clone fragrances, a lot of people were thinking 20 bucks, 25, 30, 35, something in that range, right? This stuff was like 60, $65. And you can get it for less nowadays. But when this first started to get hype, it was not really cheap. So that's one part that's interesting. The other part, Tuscan leather. You're thinking Tuscan leather. Why did you, why do you say the name of the fragrance to just make a stupid face? What does that mean? Well, used to be Tuscan leather was hype 
fire. Everybody wanted Tuscan leather. It was like tobacco, vanille, Tuscan leather, oud wood. Had to have it. And nowadays, Tuscan leather is, is almost like in the background. It's been forgotten. Ombre leather just went whoop, boom, and just kind of took it over. But La Yucawan, one glorious moment in time, was a fairly expensive clone fragrance everyone wanted. And it still is darn good. It actually smells amazing. Stars on Sunday says Liquid Brune Slays. Nailed the Altair profile for 50 bucks. And on this one, I agree. I reviewed this fragrance and I think it's one of the best ones that's come out over the past number of years. It's really, really close to Altair. So if you like that fragrance, you can get this one and it's gonna do like 95% of the job. And if the price on this one starts to dip, because it did really just finally hit in like most of the stores in the US discounters anyway. Uh, before that, it was pretty hard to find. You had to like look around, potentially order from overseas, maybe catch a bottle on eBay or something like that. But now you can find it a little easier at discounters. And when that happens, when something drops initially, I'm talking about clone fragrances, a lot of times it'll be priced a little bit higher than what it's going to ultimately end up being. So for the first however many months, I don't know, two, three months, it'll be that price, the higher price. And then as time goes on, it'll start slowly matriculating downward. At 50 bucks though, still smells amazing. Really, 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 really good. Surprisingly good. Uh, but like I said, the price keeps dropping. You get this for like 30, 35 bucks in the future. Steal. This next one is a, a real love of mine from Scarbot1713, Versace Oud Noir in place of Tom Ford Oud Wood. Another Tom Ford. Uh, might be hard to beat. Better performance and just a slight variation in DNA, which to me makes it even more wearable for a fraction of the price. I have always really, really loved Versace Oud Noir. I think the presentation looks great. I love the gradient, the gold. Uh, I just think it looks classy. It looks high end and it does have similarities to Tom Ford Oud Wood, which I also love. It's not the exact same. So, I mean, you can't wear this and expect it to be 95% um, the same as Oud Wood or anything like that, but it's in the same family, the same style. You could look at this and pretty comfortably say that Versace said, mm, can we get something kind of like Oud Wood? Would that be possible? Really nice, dark, a little bit mysterious, sexy, spicy. It's a great scent. It's one of my favorite designer Oud fragrances. Uh, if you will remember at one point in time, every designer house had an Oud fragrance. They were everywhere. You couldn't avoid them, man. Like everywhere you went, everywhere you looked, it was like a new fragrance was popping up, a new Oud fragrance. And some of these fragrances got flankers, Oud flankers. So you'd have the Oud fragrance and then an Oud flanker. And it was just like, oh man. Right now we've got a lot of fragrances that are vanilla forward, new fragrances coming out. And we also have fragrances that are uh, very clean, sweet, and like a myself-ish style, why I sell myself. So that's kind of what's popular right now. That's what we're seeing a lot of. But at one point in time, it was just all oud. That was what we were seeing. And this is part of that time frame, and it's one of the best. Lil Wirt sounds like a rapper name. Lil Wirt says, Mahir legacy is insane. But when you look at the presentation, I would agree with you. That is an interesting presentation. It's an odd shape kind of heavy and with a horse head on top. The fragrance itself is a clone of uh, Sedley from Parfums to Marley. Quality is good, price is low. And this is one of those ones that kind of didn't necessarily explode all at once as far as clone fragrances go. Sometimes that happens like Comra or Detour Noir, stuff like that. Other times you have a fragrance that just word of mouth you know, more people buy it and they like it, talk about it, and it gets more and more popular. And I feel like that's kind of what happened with this one. And it is really good, very well done, great for spring, summer, nice daytime fragrance, and the quality is good as well. So that one makes sense. Spencer Lane Bean, 4085 says, I love the value of Lalique Pour Homme, and I get the comparisons to Bois du Portugal. So Lalique is the brand. If you're looking for a designer house that consistently is very affordable at discounters and at full retail, actually kind of pricey. I'm sure Lalique themselves are not super pumped about that. They probably would rather just be selling them hand over fist for really high prices, but that is the way it is. So this one is indeed really affordable, very inexpensive from discounters. And does it smell similar to Creed's Bois de Portugal, which is pretty expensive. I mean, it is a Creed. Yeah, definitely more of a classically masculine style fragrance. 
So you do have to have a, a love and enjoyment of fragrances from yesteryear. Younger guys, probably not gonna like this one quite so much, but the quality is nice, the price point is nice. And I think that the look of the bottle is just, again, classic. Presentation looks great. Uh, simple bottle design, but then the look of the line coming through there really adds to the, uh, the look. Mm. It's great stuff, man. Mark Anthony says, I have to say Tarothi Blue. Oh. Every time. Every time I, I sit this bottle down, I feel like it's gonna tip over. Yeah. Don't do that. So this one's a really hyped clone fragrance. A lot of people love it. Very fresh, sweet, and uh, similar to Bulgari Tiger for a much, 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 much lower price. And while there are other alternatives to Tiger on the market, some that are cheaper than this one, this seems to be the one that the majority of people think is the best bang for buck. So you get a little higher quality. Yeah, the price is a little bit higher, but it's worth paying a little bit more to get this one. That seems to be the overall consensus. Benny J is up next who says, with my experience, even though you pay a portion of the price, for a cheaper alternative to a fragrance, you usually sacrifice quality, longevity, and originality. Well, definitely, if we're talking about buying a cheaper alternative to a more expensive fragrance, yeah, originality, you could probably just go ahead and take that part and just, just go ahead and push that out. That's, that's not really in play. He goes on to say, though, however, a fragrance that stands alone in this category has to be Rokas Mustache Eau de Parfum. The quality is top notch. Longevity is above average, and even though it resembles YSL Tuxedo, it still has its own character. Plus, you can find it for under $50 on discounter websites. Can't be beat, in my opinion. And he is correct across the board right there. You can absolutely find this under 50 bucks. It does have great quality, has great performance, and it does smell a little similar to Tuxedo. Once upon a time, when this was a little bit harder to find, it was more expensive at discounters. It was running like $70, $75 a lot of places, or it was just sold out. Nowadays, you can find a 2.5 ounce of that bottle, uh, of that fragrance rather, for a about 27 bucks, depending on where you look. And then the larger size you can find, you know, around 40, sometimes a little less than that. So yeah, it has dipped down in price and is a fantastic buy nowadays. I know it's not like at the peak of its hype or whatever, you know, there's like a, a curve for hype. Uh, it's not there anymore, but it is still so, so, so good and absolutely should not be overlooked. That one wabbit hits us with two Mont Blanc Legend and Explorer are both awesome in my opinion. Oh, good old Mont Blanc, both very affordable. Actually, just about all Mont Blanc fragrances, assuming they're not discontinued, are affordable, at least from their main lines. And a lot of times they have fragrances that smell similar to other things out there. Both of these are no exception. Uh, similar color schemes as well on these. So Legend right here, Legend Eau de Toilette, that is similar to Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce. And also you could draw a comparison to Percival uh, by Parfums de Marley because of course Percival also kind of similar to Fierce. And then Explorer is similar to Creed's Aventus. Both of these work really well. Both are very versatile, both pull compliments, and uh, it makes sense that these would be in the list. Actually, they got mentioned a lot. So Explorer, Legend, yeah, gotta put those in there. I can't argue that a bit. And then last but not least, we have B3Y Amber, who says, Fragrance World, Spectre Ghost. Absolutely replaced Ani in my collection. One of the only clones I own that I prefer to the original. So this is Fragrance World. Interesting presentation on this. Got like a little bullet. Looks like it's kind of hitting the bottle and then another bullet right there up on top and has a nice pressurized atomizer as well. Strong, man. And yeah, it does smell very similar to Ani by Nishane, uh, and that is pretty cheap. You have to love vanilla, because there's a lot. Bunch of vanilla off the top, has that sweet bit of spiciness in there as well. That zingy sort of like ginger cardamom mix with all the vanilla underneath. Uh, very warm fragrance, good performance. It's a great clone, really nice alternative to Ani. And Nishane, at least last time I checked, was a little bit more expensive at discounters than they had been for the previous know, few years. Ani has been sold out very often at like Fragrance by Joma Shop, a lot of the, the usual uh, discounters. And so something like this suddenly becomes way more attractive. 
because when Ani was readily available for like $80, all the discounters, you would go, ah, yeah, it's a really nice alternative, but it's not too much more expensive to just get the real thing, so I'll just get the Nishani. But then when suddenly you're looking and it's sold out, you check back a week later, sold out, two weeks later, sold out, it starts to become something where you go, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe I should check the, the phone out now. So we'll end there, an Ani alternative from Fragrance World. So there we go, guys, 12 of your choices uh, of the best affordable alternatives, whether niche, designer, uh, clone, whatever, of more expensive fragrances. Like I said, you can find on the community tab of this one and other questions where you can leave an answer. And also you can check out other people's answers that I wasn't able to cover in today's video. Uh, so maybe you'll find something interesting there, fragrance that you wanna check out uh, just through the, the answers. Thank you guys again for submitting your answers. Thank you for upvoting other people. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later. Oh,